It started with a whisper, barely a murmur, in defense circles but one, that caught the attention of every serious military observer. Turkey, a nation once dependent on Western defense tech, was building its own fifth-generation stealth fighter jet. Not a prototype, not a blueprint, but a real, flying war machine. They named it Khan a name that now carries weight far beyond its syllables. And quietly, away from headlines and official ceremonies, Pakistan had begun to orbit closer to this bold Turkish endeavor, its involvement subtle but significant. By 2023, the Turkish defense industry had already achieved things that would have seemed ambitious even a decade earlier. Indigenous drones like the Bayraktar TB2 were not just flying, they were defining conflicts. Turkish ships were being built domestically. Air defense systems were being locally developed. And now, the centerpiece, a stealth fighter, meant to rival anything in NATO arsenal, but without strings attached. Khan wasn't just a symbol of technological independence, it was a declaration. But building a fifth-gen fighter jet isn't a solo mission. It requires layers of expertise software, avionics, metallurgy, radar tech, propulsion, systems integration, and flight testing geeks demanding years of specialization. Eyes between Turkey and Pakistan were new, their defense relationship has always been warm. Pakistan had purchased Miljung-class warships from Turkey. Turkish engineers had contributed to avionics on the JF-17. And joint exercises had grown more frequent, more coordinated, and more telling. The foundation for deeper collaboration was already in place. What most people missed was how strategically timed this was for Pakistan. The country had been seeking its own fifth-generation solution under Project Azam, an ambitious indigenous stealth fighter program. But progress there had been slow, painfully slow. Developing something as complex as a stealth fighter from scratch requires massive AR budgets, testing infrastructure, and access to sensitive materials, something Pakistan wasn't positioned to do alone, at least not quickly. But by stepping into the orbit of Khan, it didn't have to. While official statements remained quiet, multiple defense sources hinted at Pakistani engineers and defense planners working closely with Turkish aerospace industries during key phases of Khan development. No flashy joint signing ceremonies. No grand declarations but involvement nonetheless. The logic was sound. Pakistan would gain access to a cutting-edge stealth fighter design, while Turkey could benefit from Pakistan's operational combat experience, air doctrine insights, and potential future Kokura. Investment. Khan first flight in early 2024 was not just a technical milestone, it was psychological. The sight of a stealth aircraft designed in a Muslim-majority country, soaring independently, was powerful. It made the abstract real. It was the kind of moment that reshaped air power calculus. Not because Khan had proven itself in combat yet, but because it had broken into an exclusive club previously dominated by the US, Russia, and China. And Pakistan was standing closer to that club than ever before. Behind closed doors, the Pakistan Air Force PAF began to show serious interest in Khan as a potential cornerstone of its future fleet. The timing made sense. PAF F-16s, while still formidable, were aging. The JF-17, developed jointly with China, was a success in terms of affordability and adaptability, but it wasn't stealth. And China's J-31 was on the table, but came with its own geopolitical baggage. Khan offered something unique, high-end capability, shared development potential, and most importantly, strategic trust. The psychological edge matters. When pilots fly into contested airspace, it's not just about radar signatures and thrust-to-weight ratios. It's about confidence in your machine, in your systems, and the people who built them. The idea of flying a jet co-developed with a trusted ally like Turkey adds a layer of assurance that can't be quantified. It's not just hardware its shared purpose. Pakistan's future in the Khan project likely won't be as a passive buyer. If current trends continue, the next steps could involve local assembly, joint production, or even customized PAF variants. 
This isn't speculation, that's how defense collaborations evolve and mutual strategic interests align over time. For Turkey, it helps secure export partners and expand Khan operational base. For Pakistan, it provides a faster path to acquiring fifth-gen air power without the full financial burden of going it alone. You won't find Pakistan's name engraved on Khan Fuselashat. At least not yet. But its fingerprints are there. In the advisory roles, the engineering meetings, the behind-the-scenes strategy sessions. In a world where military alliances are increasingly transactional, the Turkey-Pakistan dynamic is refreshingly symbiotic. The jet is just one part of the story. The real narrative is about two nations shaping their own future, not waiting for permission from traditional power centers. The kind of future that flies on its own wings silent, sleek, and sovereign.